It's an NBC 26 special assignment. We know the names Lombardi, Nitschke, and Starr all were part of the Packers' glory years in the 1960s. But one name belongs with that legendary group, a man whose family says has gone largely forgotten in Packers history. Jack Venisi is called the forgotten architect of the Green Bay Packers. Tonight, there is a movement underway to get the recognition he deserves. NBC 26's John Mino is live at 10 with more on the man who helped build a dynasty. Well, Stacy, it's a story of a brother trying to help out his brother, a big brother, who passed away 54 years ago, but whose efforts helped turn Green Bay, Wisconsin, into title town, USA. The strange part, he just doesn't seem to get any credit for it. The arrival of Vince Lombardi not only changed the fortunes of Packers football, but possibly saved a franchise, which at the time was considered the worst in all of pro football. The man who convinced Lombardi to consider Green Bay and Green Bay to consider Lombardi was Jack Venisi. He was able to convince uh, Dominic Olenichuk at the time to at least look at him, and, and that was the end of the story. What awaited Lombardi, aside from a team that had just completed a one-win season, a roster that included seven future NFL Hall of Famers, each and every one brought in by Venisi. His most impressive find? People look at, well, you know, Paul Horning, but I think I, th I think Bart Starr is going to stand out as probably one of his greatest. Convincing draftees to come to Green Bay wasn't an easy sell in those days. His best sales job, the day he bumped into a draft pick by the name of Nitschke at the train station. Jack said, where the hell are you going, Ray? And he said, I'm going up to Canada. He says, what do you mean you're going up to Canada? He says, you're supposed to be up in Green Bay. He says, I was up there. And he says, you can have those people up there. He just... And Jack grabbed him and rented a car and drove up to Green Bay and signed him that same day. Tragically, in 1960, Venisi died at just 33 years old, roughly a month before the Packers' first playoff game of the glory years. But his work to that day would pay off in legendary fashion. If you look back at what he's done, 11 people in the Hall of Fame, I'm talking about Lombardi and all the players that he brought here, there's nobody in the NFL history that in 10 years has accomplished that. In his book, When Pride Still Mattered, author David Marinus gives Venisi the credit he believes is well overdue. But despite the national accolades, his mark seems to be missing from Packers lore. The old timers that remember that era all respect Jack and give Jack the, the, the respect that he deserves. But the younger generation or the present generation, unfortunately, doesn't have any idea what Jack contributed. So far, Sam has struck out in trying to get Jack's name on the Lambeau Field Ring of Honor but will not give up on Canton. Contributors are being considered for Canton, and I see Ron Wolf is, is a finalist, which I think is great. And uh, so if their contributors can be considered as entries of the Hall of Fame, I think Jack deserves to be considered. Wow, what an amazing 11 story. Hall of Famers. Yes. Most than anybody in history. It'll never be topped. No, and we still have that burning question. Why is he being overlooked? Dr. Venisi, his brother there, thinks it might have something to do with the fact that his title was scout. It wasn't general manager. Vince Lombardi had the term general manager. Mm -hmm. But what Venisi did is exactly what Ted Thompson and Ron Wolf did. Found the coach, brought in the players, and then turned them over. It's just that his title was different, and he kind of thinks that people nowadays, when they weren't around seeing Venisi what he did, they think, well, he was only a scout, he wasn't a GM, and sure. that that hurts him. Hmm. Well, let's hope that he'll finally get the recognition Absolutely. he deserves. No question. All right. Thanks, John.